Welcome everybody, Cannabis News with Joe Claire to December 18th, 2018, presented as always by the Marijuana Times. Click that video tab at marijuanatimes.org to find the show. You can also search the Marijuana Times on Apple Podcasts to find the audio-only version of the show today. We're talking about the Surgeon General, recently made a lot of comments about cannabis. Also, recreational licenses being awarded out in Nevada and the uh, continuing evolution of New York Governor Cuomo on the issue of marijuana law reform. All that coming up. But first, of course, Cannabis News brought to you by NatureSide. Nature-Side.com. Side is spelled C-I-D-E. You just check out their organic, all-natural pesticides. Grow safe and poison-free. Don't use harmful chemicals on what you are growing. Don't use banned pesticides. Use Nature Side, nature side.com, a proud sponsor of Cannabis News. It's first story from marijuanatimes.org. I've <laughs> been problem with a dot today. Marijuanatimes.org, by yours truly. The Surgeon General has a lot to say about marijuana. This story also links and references a story by our own Jason Sander from last week. In that story, the Surgeon General uh, expressed some positive sentiments about the need for more marijuana research. That's a good thing. And uh, this story, his, his his perspective on things is a little bit more negative. In uh, Jason's story, the Surgeon General was talking about, uh, Surgeon General Adams was talking about more of a policy research part of cannabis in, uh, in this um, video that I link in this story. He's talking more about marijuana as uh, a health, how healthy it is, how safe it is, things of that nature. Um, Adams, in uh, the video I'm talking about, he was at an answer and, uh, question and answer session sponsored by the Washington Post in Washington, D.C. Uh, he said the marijuana question is a little bit too complicated to unpack in this setting. He there and then after proceeded uh, to uh, unpack it quite a bit. He said, it's important that we understand that there's a difference between the discussion of the medical properties of marijuana. And he pauses here and says, I don't say medical marijuana because there's no such thing as medical marijuana any more than there's such a thing as medical poppy. Of course, poppy is what, you know, heroin and opioids and, and such are derived from. So what he's saying is that the only medicine that's real for marijuana is derived from marijuana, not marijuana itself. As I point out, there are millions of people just in this country alone that use cannabis, the flower, in whatever way they want to ingest it, directly from the plant. It's not derived from anything. It's picked right off the plant that grows out of the ground and burned or vaporized or whatever. Um, millions of people every day use that as medicine. And for the, the, the top medical person in the U.S. government to say that there's no such thing as medical marijuana is a uh, painfully... Ignorant. Now, I will allow that he may be doing what a lot of people in government do. Their de their definition of medicine is very narrow, as in anything that's been approved by the FDA. One area we have anything that's been approved by the FDA in this little box, and that's medicine. And every other substance known to man that has not been approved by the DEA fits in the box called not medicine. Now, if that's what he's doing, I mean, I get it for his job at I'm saying the Surgeon General of the United States cannot really be unaware of the millions of people and the thousands of studies that show that the, the medical properties of something as, oh, I don't know, degenerate as uh, smoking a joint or a bowl or, oh, God forbid, uh, taking a bong rip or something of that nature, that that carries no medical efficacy. That is insane. And I can't believe the Surgeon General of the United States is unaware of that. He must mean FDA approved, in which case he's towing the company line, which is, you know, I mean, I I guess I, if that's what you've chosen to do, well, <laughs> if you've chosen to insult millions of people and tow the company line, in this case, the government line, then, uh, you know, I guess we all make our own decisions. But, um, yeah, marijuana is medicine. People use it all the time. It's not derived from anything other than they took it off a plant. And, you know, and, and, and dried it or whatever and trimmed it. And, and, and that's it. Of course, he's probably referencing epidiolex in an oblique way or whatever. I don't, I don't care. It's dumb. It's dumb. And I'm moving on. <laughs> this next story. 
<laughs> this is from Review Journal. Dot com Nevada awards 61 more recreational marijuana dispensary licenses. A few companies, cannabis companies, are reaping riches after the latest Nevada dispensary licensing round. Green Growth Brands and Taproot Holdings have each been awarded seven licenses to operate in the state, while Green Mart NLV took home four. This month, Nevada awarded 61 conditional recreational dispensary licenses including 31 in Clark County, which is, of course, the county that has Las Vegas in it. Currently, there are 65 dispensaries operating in the state. So there's 65. They've awarded another 61 licenses, which means they're going to double the number of marijuana outlets, recreational outlets, in the state. Uh, The Nevada Department of Taxation, which oversees the industry, declined to name the awardees until they receive a final state license after inspection. That could take up to a year. Seems like an incredible amount of time. Whatever, I don't know. Um, of course, they point out the um, the Green Growth Brands CEO points out why Clark County especially is so important. He says, our presence in Nevada has been strategic from the start. With 3 million residents and 42 million annual visitors, this is the market like no other, which is why we chose Nevada as the first state where we will present the full expression of our brands, products, and services. That's true. A lot of tourists come through the Las Vegas area and uh well i imagine uh, some of them would like to buy some legal cannabis i don't know I, mean, I can't guarantee that but uh if i were betting money if i were betting man if i gambled at all i would say that yeah some of them may be interested in some legal cannabis <laughs> bunch you know how those people are they like cannabis so they buy some from a legal shop They're crazy people businessinsider.com brings us our last story <laughs> New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says legalizing marijuana is one of his top legislative priorities for 2008 or 2019. So the evolution of New York Governor Andrew Cuomo on the issue of marijuana law reform is complete, as we talked about a lot on this show. As mentioned in this article that I link in the description of this video, just two years ago, uh, he was calling marijuana a gateway drug in February 2019. Uh, but now 63% of New Yorkers favor legalizing marijuana. Of course, the primary challenge that Cynthia Nixon, a.k.a. Miranda, from Sex and the City mounted against Cuomo did a lot to push him toward marijuana law reform. She failed ultimately to to unseat him as a Democratic nominee. But uh, you see over the course of that campaign, we did a lot of stories just on this show, where she would just hammer the issue of marijuana legalization. And, of course, she got a lot of press because she's Miranda. Uh, no, so... And then, so Cuomo, uh, you could see him during that, especially moving with every statement, just moving a little bit more like, oh, it's something we should look into and it's something we should think about. And maybe, you know, there's some criminal justice aspects that need to be changed. Now he's like, oh, this is one of my top priorities, son. We're moving full steam ahead on marijuana legalization. Two years ago, yeah, it was a gateway drug. That's cool. But uh, now it's one of my top legislative priorities. Let's get it done. I've, as I said before, even allies who come late, that's great. And I'm all for Governor Cuomo now being this new person who loves marijuana. We'll point out that, uh, you know, as we do with everybody else who we feel came into the game a little bit late, uh, 2017 is pretty late when <laughs> it comes to getting on the marijuana legalization bandwagon. But we'll continue to point out that, you know, these people are late, but they have, uh, they have something to contribute. People like Cuomo and John Boehner and so many others. They have something to contribute now to the discussion that will benefit people who use cannabis and people who want to want to get into the cannabis industry. So that's good, and uh, we can applaud them for that. While still pointing out that hey, you know, we've been here a while. We were waiting. <laughs> we've been <laughs> been doing this for quite a few years, just waiting for you know some of these people to to jump on board. And you know, you can do both. You can welcome them aboard while pointing out that boy, it took you long enough. That's going to do it for Cannabis News today. Thank you for liking and sharing, commenting on the videos. Spreading the truth about cannabis. Subscribe on YouTube and Vimeo, the Marijuana Times. If you're on YouTube, hit that little notification bell so you are alerted on your phone or whatever device you use. When a new episode of Cannabis News has dropped, as the kids say. Thank you for watching and listening today. And we'll see you next time right here on Cannabis News. (laughs) 